Hi everyone, and welcome to Greg Doucette News, your one and only news source for all things Greg Doucette, and today we have a breaking news story. Greg Doucette charges $15,000 for online coaching when he really doesn't have any clue of what he's talking about. So Dr. Spencer Nadolsky just recently made a couple posts on Instagram talking about how exercise relates to weight loss. And then, of course, Greg Desette made an absolutely ridiculous, uninformed, stupid response. So that's what we're going to look at today. And uh, as we go through this video, uh, just keep in mind, Greg Desette charges $15,000 for online coaching. Coach Greg, and today I'm going to settle the debate on what's better for fat loss. Is it cardio or is it lifting weights? Obviously, it's better to do both. That goes without saying. But if you had to choose one or the other, which is the one you should do? I'm telling you it's better to choose cardio. That is coming from an IFBB Pro bodybuilder. Clearly, I like to lift weights, and I'm still saying cardio is better than lifting weights. Recently, a few posts were made by a famous doctor named Dr. Spencer Nadolsky. Dr. Spencer Nadolsky has been trying to downplay the importance of cardio. I'm here to say he's biased. He's trying to tell you that lifting weights is more important than cardio. And he's trying to downplay just how important cardio is. Okay, so first of all, I just want to point out that Greg is deliberately trying to be manipulative and he's lying about what Dr. Spencer Nadolsky said. Spencer Nadolsky never argued that weight training is better for fat loss. If you actually read his Instagram posts, he never made any such claim. In his first post, all he showed was just the main sources of energy expenditure in an average person's day, and based on that, he made some suggestions on how to modulate diet and exercise to achieve fat loss, and in his second post, he was just urging people to include weight training within their weight loss routine in order to achieve a better overall body composition. This is a tactic that Greg Desette just normally employs. Rather than directly responding to someone's argument, he switches their argument around. He puts words in their mouth. He essentially strawmans them so that it's easier to make them look bad and it's easier for him to come up with an argument against a position that they don't actually hold. So he posted a chart. It's called the calories you burn. Total Daily Energy Expenditure, TDEE. And he separated it into certain sections. So he states that your BMR is approximately 70% of the calories you burn in a day. 15% is the NEAT, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Calories you burn at rest, just sitting around watching TV, making videos. The TEF, the thermic effect of food, is about 10%. That's the calories you burn digesting food of which protein has a higher thermic effect. Exercise activity thermogenesis, 5%. Exercise, 5%. That's what he's got on his chart, 5%. So let's take an average diet of say 2,000 calories. 2,000 calories. It's more for some of you and it's less for some of you. Of the 2,000 calories, 5% is 100 calories. That's it, 100 calories. That's all the exercise you're doing in a day, 100 calories. So this is just more of the same dishonest nonsense from Greg, and once again, he is straw manning Dr. Spencer Nadolsky. So if you actually bother to take a look at Spencer's Instagram post, nowhere did he mention that this energy expenditure chart represents the normal sources of energy expenditure in an athlete or a, you know, relatively active person who engages in normal, rigorous exercise. Spencer never claimed that, you know, an athlete or, you know, a bodybuilder or somebody who works out is only going to burn, you know, like a hundred or so calories in a single day from exercise. So if Greg bothered to do his research, he would have learned that this chart originates from a paper titled Biology's Response to Dieting, the Impetus for Weight Regain, and the data from this chart was taken from an experiment that measured changes in energy expenditure as a result of energy-restricted weight loss. So the chart that Dr. Spencer Nadolsky was referring to in his Instagram post was only looking at 
normal sedentary individuals, which is why, yeah, only 5% of their total energy expenditure came from exercise or, you know, roughly 100 calories. So where did you get this idea that Dr. Spencer was talking about athletes in this Instagram post when clearly you can tell from the chart these people aren't athletes? Nowhere in the post did he say this chart relates to athletes, and if you bothered researching where this chart came from, you'd know this chart had nothing to do with athletes. So you deliberately strawmanned Dr. Spencer Nadolsky. It was clear that he wasn't talking about athletes, and you just made up these stupid accusations. So what Coach Greg says is maybe we should up that 5%, maybe to 15%, to 25%. After all, 15% of 2,000, that's 300 calories. If you burn 300 calories, that's a big difference. That's 200 extra calories. But is that what he suggests we should do? No, I'll read what he suggests we should do. Most importantly is the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So what he's saying is we should focus on meat. The calories you're burning when we're not exercising, just sitting and around. So what does he say we should do? It's the little stuff like fidgeting and changing posture and walking. Although purposeful walking is in fact an exercise. This is where we can have a major impact on the amount we burn. Increasing ways we move without it being purposeful exercise is probably a good idea if possible. Really, you wanna focus on fidgeting more all day, adjusting yourself in your seat, Maybe standing up when making videos instead of sitting down because it burns more calories to stand up than sitting. That is what we should focus on, not doing cardio. So again, Greg Desette is lying in straw manning Dr. Spencer Nadolsky. So again, if you take a look at his post, nowhere did Dr. Spencer recommend that if someone is sedentary, they shouldn't increase their energy expenditure through exercise. Where the hell did Greg get this idea? He is obviously just flat out lying about this. And on top of that, it gets worse. So if we take a look at this post, you'll see he says, as promised, here are some more basics. So clearly this is a follow-up post that he made before. So if you only scroll down just a little bit, he made a post on May 8th. The post that Greg is talking about was made on May 12th. So only four days prior, Dr. Spencer Nadolsky talked about what he recommends for his patients and clients to improve their health, you know, achieve weight loss. And this is what he recommends. Resistance training, two to five times per week. Um, dieting, of course, but also aerobic training, two to five times per week. And he has a little cyclist here. So clearly he is recommending his patients or his clients increase their physical activity, which includes cardiovascular exercise. So isn't that funny? It's weird how Greg just didn't happen to notice this post that uh, Dr. Spencer made on his Instagram. I'm sure it's just a coincidence, right? It's not like Greg would deliberately try to misquote someone and take them out of context, right? No, Greg is just too much of a stand-up guy. And then of course, Greg, uh, once again, straw man Dr. Spencer N Nadolsky, claiming that, uh, you know, Spencer said, oh, well, we should just, you know, focus on fidgeting around in our chairs, you know, for physical activity. Spencer never said that. He said, we should try to increase non-exercise energy expenditure. Uh, that means any physical activity that isn't purposeful exercise. That could include things like uh, what Spencer mentioned in his post, like fidgeting around in a chair, walking, uh, it could be any physical activity that is a hobby of yours. So like rollerblading, cycling, you know, just as a leisurely activity that you do for fun, hiking, uh, walking your dog, playing with your kids, things like that. So to claim that Spencer is saying, oh, we should just fidget around in her chair. Don't bother lifting weights or doing cardio. No, just fidget around in her chair. That is just incredibly disingenuous. And Greg knows that this is an outright lie. You'll see the exercise thermogenesis is a small component. That is ridiculous. Why is he not promoting that you should make it a large component? Why is he not saying this? This partly explains why exercise isn't that great by itself for weight loss. No, it doesn't partly explain that at all. As in Zeno, it doesn't explain it whatsoever. It does the opposite. Exercise is great for fat loss. 
There's only so much you can do of it and our bodies have interesting ways of compensating for it anyway. There's only so much fidgeting and adjusting myself in my seat now, isn't there? Only so much cardio you can do. Yeah, some people it's five hours a day, some it's 20 minutes, some it's an hour. You really think that we shouldn't focus on cardio, we should focus on sitting around like this all day long. And again, we already know that most of these arguments are just straw men. We know that Dr. Spencer Nadolsky recommends increasing physical activity in the form of weight training and cardio to help with weight loss. But uh, the reason that Dr. Spencer Nadolsky is emphasizing non-exercise energy expenditure, which to be clear, is not just fidgeting around in your chair. Uh, that is any physical activity that is not purposeful exercise. So that could be virtually anything that you just do for fun. So like rollerblading, cycling, hiking, even like jogging, if you, if you just enjoy it and you're not doing it for purposeful exercise. So the reason that uh, Dr. Spencer Nadolsky is emphasizing increasing non-exercise energy expenditure as opposed to purposeful exercise, like, you know, going to the gym to go on, you know, the elliptical machine to burn calories. Uh, as far as the research goes on purposeful exercise, especially on cardio, uh, there seem to be like mixed results. Uh, increasing cardio seems to sometimes reduce non-exercise energy expenditure to the point where there's no net benefit. There's no net increase to total daily energy expenditure. And um, it, it seems to also increase um, appetite in some individuals, which again, can lead to no net benefit. And it can also be hard to uh, adhere to a program like that, where you have to do a lot of uh, you know purposeful exercise. Whereas if you're just doing something for fun, something you'd normally do that isn't purposeful, purposeful exercise, it's a lot easier to stick to. So uh, that is why Dr. Spencer Nadolsky is emphasizing, you know, ensuring that you up your uh, non-exercise energy expenditure and not, you know, super hyper focus on just purposeful exercise. He's not saying that don't do any purposeful exercise or that it's not important. He's just emphasizing that non-exercise energy expenditure is also really important. It's something that's neglected. Greg is, again, just completely taking him out of context and straw manning him. Oh, but your body has interesting ways of adjusting to doing cardio, so you shouldn't do it. No. Here's the example. You go for a bike ride. Yesterday, I burned 875 calories. Then I'm more tired, so you sit around more. Yeah, so you're conserving some of those calories. Do you think I'm going to conserve 875 extra calories? So this just shows how out of touch Greg Desette is. Do you think it is practical for a natural lifter to be, you know, doing weight training maybe three to five days a week, 90 minute sessions, and then on top of that, eat in a caloric deficit and do sessions of cardio where you're burning 900 calories in a single session? Does that not seem overkill, especially when you consider, like most people have jobs, most people work 40 hour weeks, and on top of that, you have relationships, maybe you have kids, pets to take care of, other responsibilities. Does this seem practical for anyone? No, this, that just doesn't sound like sustainable levels of activity. So Greg, like it's great that, you know, you're on steroids and you're a bodybuilder and you don't have a normal job and you can spend that sort of time and energy on riding a bike until you burn almost a thousand calories. Most pe with, for most people, that's just not practical, Greg. No. So yeah, if you do cardio, your body conserves energy, your knee goes down. Maybe it goes down by 100, 200 calories, but you burn off 500. You still burn 300 extra. So you clearly are in a deficit. It makes no sense to say, oh, cardio doesn't work because your body, it compensates for it. Yeah, it compensates by putting you in better shape. And then you can burn even more calories. Maybe you burn 500 calories the first time. A year later, you burn 1,000 because you're in better shape. That walk turned to a run because you're fit. That slow bike ride turned into a fast bike ride. You walked up the hill the first day. Now you're sprinting up that hill because you're in shape. 
It is irresponsible for this doctor to downplay the benefits of doing cardio and to act like it only burns 5% of your calories in a day. I know I keep repeating myself, but again, Greg, these are all just straw man arguments. Dr. Spencer Nadolsky never claimed that you can only burn 5% of calories from exercise. You know that he recommends for his clients to increase their cardiovascular exercise. You know you are just flat out lying here. And on top of that, whether you're in shape or not, burning a thousand calories within a single session of cardio comes with a massive fatigue cost. So if you're a natural lifter, you have a limited ability to recover and you are going to experience like greater effects from fatigue. You probably are going to, you know, have a lot less energy to do things throughout your day compared to an enhanced athlete. Yet yeah, doing cardio like that is going to be a huge detriment, especially if your goal isn't just purely weight loss. Like most people want to improve their overall body composition. So if you're telling like a natural client, oh yeah, do like, you know, three to five sessions of weight training per week for 90 minutes. And on top of that, yeah, do a thousand calorie burning sessions of cardio. Like that's just an insane amount of work. You're going to end up losing muscle. So this just isn't good advice. Cardio is the number one. It's the highest. The neat, that is small compared to everything else too. Why focus on the thermic effect of food and neat when you can focus on cardio, activity, moving, getting off your ass, getting off the couch, going for a walk, hiking, biking, doing something. So now Greg Desat is actually arguing in favor of Dr. Spencer Nadolsky's position. Uh, so Greg now doesn't seem to understand what non-exercise energy expenditure is, even though it was explained to him in the Instagram post. It is any physical activity that is not purposeful exercise. So that includes things like walking, hiking, biking, anything that you do for fun that is physical activity. So Greg, like, great job. I guess now you agree with Dr. Spencer Nadolsky. He made a post, what people think exercise looks like for fat loss. And he's right, most people would say, run and do it some form of cardio. What exercise actually looks like for fat loss? One picture of cardio, five pictures of lifting weights. To be fair, should it not be half of each? Three pictures of cardio, three pictures of lifting weights. The way he states it makes it look like it's mostly lifting weights, a little bit of cardio on the side, a little bit, maybe warm up. When it should be a lot of cardio, as much as the weights equal. Why not promote both equally? And again, this just proves that Greg has absolutely no idea of what he's talking about. He's completely disconnected from reality and he, he just doesn't know anything about training or programming. So Greg is telling us that we should do equal amounts of weight training and cardio. Why? How is that beneficial? So if we're like fairly serious about weight training, we're training four days a week, roughly hour and a half sessions, we also have to do cardio four days a week, hour and a half sessions. Greg, do you think maybe for a natural lifter who also has like a job, kids, relationships, family commitments, other things to do, that might be a little bit too much. Do you think we might have a bit of trouble recovering from that? Do you think maybe we'd lose muscle while dieting? doing that much cardio, especially with the intensities you're recommending. Yeah, try to burn a thousand calories with, within a single session of cardio. Are you nuts? Like even people who are accused of taking steroids, like Mike Thurston, I'm one of the few people who actually think he might be natural. Even Mike Thurston talks about this and says, you know, the physical activity that he does outside of weight training, it's fairly low intensity. It's just aerobic, like, you know, walking and stuff. If he does too much high intensity cardio, he just can't recover from training. A lot of people probably like, well, but your viewers, but a lot like probably my viewers, think that you do a lot of this stuff because you're so yeah, yeah. fit. Yeah. But in reality, you don't. Uh, if I do too much of the high intensity stuff, yeah. it impacts my recovery. Yeah. And it does? Yeah, because because I'm training like almost five times a week, sometimes six times a week. If I'm doing too much intense cardio on top of that, then I'm just like drained. I'm drained because already the training sessions which I do when I'm lifting the weights, like I'm pushing to failure. Not every set, but almost every set. Like the sessions are very intense. So outside of the gym, I want to be 
Just relax. relax. We're gonna do oh. beach, yeah. kind of bit. Beach, pool, you know, nice. I'm going to that. And it's also worth noting that Mike Thurston is clearly shredded. He stays lean all year round. He looks great. And here he is saying, like, you know, I, I do really high intensity weight training. So, you know, when I'm doing cardio and stuff, it's always really low intensity. And he even admitted in the video, he focuses on non-exercise energy expenditure outside of the gym. So he'll go to the beach, walk around a lot, uh, you know, go swimming, things like that. He doesn't do high intensity cardio where he tries to burn a thousand calories on the bike in a single session. Something like that would impact his recovery and he just wouldn't be able to train. And... If you think Mike Thurston is on steroids, I'm one of the few people, again, who think he might be natural. But if you think he's on steroids, that makes things even look worse for Greg, because then even steroid users don't follow Greg DeSette's advice and they still have trouble recovering. So Greg, this is just stupid, claiming that we should do as much high intensity cardio as we do like weight training. You're out of your goddamn mind. So I wrote on his wall, wrong. Dr. Nadalski writes, if you care to explain, I can then explain why your explanation is wrong, lol. I love this. I love the back and forth as if I'm going to be wrong. Y'all think Coach Greg's going to be wrong about weight loss? So I know this and I welcome Dr. Nadalski to make a rebuttal. Show me what you meant. Try to disprove what I'm telling you. So I thought the situation was funny because Greg Desett didn't challenge Dr. Spencer Nadolsky to a debate. And why wouldn't he? Like, Greg was so confident. He said, oh, I know I'm right and I know you're wrong. Let's see you even try to make a response. Greg, if you're so confident, why didn't you challenge him to a live debate? It's because you know you're a lying moron. Let's be honest. If Spencer was the one who challenged you to a live debate, you would have come up with some stupid excuse to weasel out of it. You would have said like, oh, Oh, I don't have enough time. I'm so busy with clients and making YouTube videos or you you would have come up with an excuse like uh, Oh, uh, this topic is stupid anyway, and I know I'm right. So why would I waste my time? You'd come up with some stupid excuse like that So Greg if you're going to claim that oh, I know you, you like I'm right and you're wrong then prove it like, challenge Spencer to a debate. Invite him onto your channel. Spencer actually made a response on his Instagram, and you still haven't responded back to him. So here's what Dr. Spencer Nadolsky had to say in response to Greg Desette, and he he's making the same arguments I'm making here. So it's no, like, it'll become obvious why Greg wouldn't debate Dr. Spencer. If you ever wanted to see a classic straw man argument, you can check out the most recent Greg Desette video uh, he made about me. I know he does this for views, so it's all good. I made a post about how we should add in resistance training when trying to lose weight, and also a post about our energy metabolism components, basal, metabolic rate, etc. He was mad because in the post about exercises, uh, about what exercises to do, I only had one picture of cardio and multiple pics of lifting. Then in the energy components post, the exercise activity was the smallest. Mind you, this graphic was from a textbook and based on averages in the general population. So like I mentioned before, Greg is just taking everything he said out of context. Exercise itself is lousy for fat loss relative to diet. All studies back this up. But if you're going to split hairs, it's true that aerobic training is better for fat loss compared to weightlifting. No one is contesting that. I didn't claim weightlifting was better than cardio. So like I mentioned, his post never had anything to do with weightlifting being better than cardio. I said to do both, saying I said weightlifting was better is an example of a straw man argument. It wasn't my claim, I just said to do both to hold on to muscle as you lose fat. So again, his recommendations were um, within the context of favorable body composition changes, not just losing weight as quickly as possible. Burning calories is not a clinical outcome. Let's look at effects on fat loss. The studies show adding exercise to diet adds a couple percent weight loss in the, act, in the active phase. There is an effect, albeit relatively small compared to diet or especially uh, drugs or surgery. Who cares how many calories one burns during a bout of exercise? We care about the outcomes. So again, uh, Greg is just focusing on burning as many, as many calories as possible. That doesn't necessarily lead to uh, increased fat loss. In terms of modifying your NEAT or non-exercise activity, some may say that walking is exercise depending on whether you're doing it purposefully or not. Like what if you have to walk to work or walk to the store that's not exercise necessarily? So we can debate the nuance, uh, nuance in that distinction, but most will say that NEAT is what can have the highest variability. 
Aerobic or cardio training is amazing. Just have the right expectations. It won't drop the pounds the way that focus, focusing on diet will. Look up the constrained energy expenditure model for understanding why training to continually pump up calories burned from cardio will not result in massive weight loss. So Dr. Spencer pointed out essentially the same flaws in Greg's argument as I did. Uh, do you expect Greg to invite Dr. Spencer and Nadolsky on for a debate? Of course not. He'd get absolutely destroyed and make a fool of himself. Do you even think Greg will make a video response to this? Probably not, and if he does, he'll use the same lies and manipulating tactics he always does. Dr. Nadolsky, the point is exercise itself sucks for weight loss in general, but resistance training very important for maintaining bone health and muscle, which become very important for long-term weight loss maintenance, along with aerobic training. If you do a lot of cardio, you're probably very lean, burn off a lot of calories, you can eat a lot more now, can't you? I've seen a lot of weightlifters that lift a lot of weights, have friends that lift weights. They don't lose weight. They don't. I've seen a lot of bodybuilders, seen a lot of powerlifters. Not many of them are lean. They're lifting a lot of weight, they're big guys, but they eat too much and they don't do cardio and they're not lean. Greg is literally losing his mind. Like he's just completely losing his grasp on reality. There are plenty of lean powerlifters and bodybuilders. Like, what are you talking about? I've also seen plenty of fat cyclists, even professional fighters, like boxers and MMA fighters who have to have good cardio, who train cardio all the time. Some of them are still fat or chubby. So what are you talking about, Greg? Like, what you are saying does not match reality, and the fact is, the science also disagrees with you. The fact is, exercise is not the most important factor for weight loss or weight maintenance. And, oh, if you just do cardio, your muscles and bones won't be strong. You picture me biking up that hill, you think my muscles aren't working? You think I'm not getting a workout? You're out rowing and kayaking on the water. You don't think your muscles are getting a workout? So that just might have been the dumbest statement in Greg's entire video, which is saying a lot. He's literally claiming that doing cardio builds muscle. Like, and, and we're talking about in a weight loss context, by the way. He thinks that doing high intensity cardio, where you burn a thousand calories in a single session, helps to build muscle while you're losing weight. Greg, I, I don't know why people pay $15,000 for your online coaching, but apparently um, you have a lot of idiots in your audience that are willing to do it. So congratulations, dude. But um, yeah, like, I, I don't care if any of you are Greg Deset fanboys, if you hate me or whatever, if you're stupid enough to throw away 15 grand of your own money to have this idiot tell you that, you know, if you want to build muscle while dieting, yes, yeah, cycle up a hill and burn a thousand calories. Well, it's your money. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm thinking of starting online coaching again, so stay tuned for that. I might uh, offer uh, not only a better service than Greg, but I will also be uh, far cheaper. I'm not going to charge 15 grand, so stay tuned for that. I'll probably make an announcement soon. But hopefully uh, you learned something from this video, hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, of course if Greg wants to debate me on this topic, he, he can come on my channel anytime. I know he's not gonna because you're afraid, Greg. I'm sure you'll leave a comment down below saying, I'm not gonna debate you because you're a little mosquito. Well, you know what, Greg? Your fucking brain is the size of a mosquito, clearly. And if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gain store. If you're looking for vegan pet food, then check out Vigor. They have a wide selection of vegan cat and dog food. And if you click the link in the description and use the discount code, you can get 10% off of any order. And uh, if you want to see me naked, see my pee-pee, check out my OnlyFans. And uh, as always, keep making those vegan gains. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.